I really believe that uh, human populations that do not have contact with the psychedelic tremendum are neurotic because they are male ego dominated. Yeah, big ego. The reason I call it male ego is because women, by virtue of physiology, basically, have are, are pretty unavoidably welded to the nitty-gritty because they give birth, they carry children to term, and those two things which are biologically dictated. There is also the cultural dictate that women are usually involved in preparing and burying the dead in traditional societies. So women know how weird it is. I mean, surely to give birth must give you a perspective that anybody who's never done it just cannot hope to have. So uh, the male ego is it floats on this myth of separateness that no woman has the luxury of entertaining because birth, pregnancy, menstruation, care for the sick, care for the dying. Uh, these are boundary dissolving activities that keep women close to the nitty gritty. Uh, the male organism can go off into its own private Idaho pretty much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Often what child rearing means is the simple act of impregnation and then that's the contribution in many cases in primitive and modern societies. Death is something the women take care of. Birth in primitive societies, men are never present uh, and women do it alone or with other women, so forth and so on. So. Uh, in in these Neolithic and and uh, and uh, Paleolithic societies, this tendency of the ego to tumorize and grow in in individuals was kept down by a chemical regulator, which was the psychedelic experience. It was part of the food chain and it's suppressed ego, much in the way that drugs are given in prisons to suppress libido, because it makes it's hard to manage uh, highly libidinous people in an institutionalized situation, especially when it's only one sex is involved. So this natural regulation of the human species by regulating this psychic function called ego was disrupted uh, with the invention of agriculture. And the hunting-gathering society with its deep involvement in uh, uh, ecstasy, which, and it was these weekly or bi-weekly psychedelic orgy ecstasy picnics, that people used to have, that gave way, and Weston Labar makes the point that ecstasy is not at a premium in agricultural societies because it's disruptive. That what is at a premium in agricultural societies is the ability to get up before dawn and pick up your tools and go to the fields and work like a dog. And uh, if people have been up all night before dancing and tripping, and they can't do that. And so the, the, psychedelic, uh, the psychedelic gods are replaced by cereals, corn, wheat, rye. And of course, you know, at a very early strata in the Neolithic, you do get the emergence. I mean, Fraser is full of talk about the great corn god and Tammuz and all this. So uh, we are living the legacy of millennia of cultural neurosis in Western civilization by virtue of the fact of the untreated growth 
of the cancerous ego. And we know this, it's simply that we assume there is no cure. We assume that it's natural to have ego and that it's somehow unnatural to suppress it. But wherever you have a break, an outbreak of psychedelic use in a high-tech society, then you see re-feminized, hang-loose, communal, caring yeah. values, well, values, uh, come into prominence within the community.